Let's get cracking! Hello everybody and welcome to the second game, Power Rangers vs. Next KZ in this two game series for the D2CL Season 3. We got, uh, we're just getting straight into the, uh, straight into the draft right now because, uh, we are a little bit, we're a little bit behind right now, um, mainly because we had some technical issues, we apologize for that, uh, we finally got our daily motion stream up. So we're good to go. You guys uh, who are just now tuning in, you obviously missed out on game one, unless you were tuning in inside of Dota TV, in which case, good on you. But uh, for those of you guys who are just now tuning in the stream, you missed game one. That will be up on uh, YouTube as well as Daily Motion as soon as possible. We did actually cast the game and recorded it and everything else. Uh, it just was not streamed. So you guys should definitely check out the VODs for that game. It was a lot of fun. I can welcome in my co-caster now. Pimp Muckle is going to be joining me. And Pimp, what is going on with the draft so far dude we got an eggs it's gonna be amazing and it's not played by scandal which is very surprising because well power rangers they love their eggs and i'm not sure what is it with all the x picks in the last like few weeks but damn i love it yeah me too man me too it's a, a pretty solid dazzle counter uh for for many many teams but it's also just a really strong uh really strong hero man i was talking to um Oh, I don't remember who, what pro player I was talking to recently, but he was, um, he was telling me like, if you get a really good axe player, and if he picks up a blink dagger within pretty decent time, it's like a poor man's RP, man. That that berserker's call just goes through everything, and it's a really solid disable, and uh, just forces people to stay grouped up. And exactly what you want to see when you're running heroes, uh, maybe with a little bit of AOE. Next KZ, right now they've got to weave as well as the bat rider fire damage, so they do have something to be able to top off a good at knack and a good axe initiation. We got uh, Invoker, Shadow Demon and Marana being picked up by Power Rangers. So, they do have the Shadow Demon Marana combo as well as the Shun Strike on top of that. So, some early aggression looks like Power Rangers uh they're wanting to fight next KZ really early on just like they did in game 1. Mhm. Mm well, all aggression always nice to watch and always pretty good. Also, once again, Scandal's Invoker is going to be one here. And they also got a Shadow Deem Murana combination last time around. And wow, a Tide Hunter. They didn't have the Shadow Deem, they had the Bane. And Bane didn't make too much happen, but the Lina was pretty much making up for it. And well, this time around, we're going to see a Tide Hunter against the X, against the Battery Rider Guns, all this sort of initiation. I love the hero because you're always going to get your Ravage off, no matter how hard you're disabled. Are. Um, but. How the hell are you going to lane this? Yeah, I um, so maybe Tidehunter is support. That used to be seen uh, quite a lot. And honestly, you may not need uh, a real big extra nuker. When you've got the Shadow Demon Disruption leading into the Marana Arrow, uh, and then Sunstrike as well, that's probably enough burst damage. So do you really need a, a like some sort of really, really like heavy early nuking support? Or can you just get a little bit greedy with your extra support? Go for Tidehunter, who nu whose nukes aren't quite as strong, but he's a really, really good mid-game support. Or possibly you throw Tidehunter as a middle here, or maybe even safe lane solo, and put Invoker in that other solo lane, then just run an aggro try. Radiant team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, could also be universe style off lane, Tide Hunter. I'm not sure. Mm, yeah. Like, universe is. I mean, he's a pretty crazy good off lane player, anyways. But his off lane Tide Hunter is pretty damn good. So yeah, wouldn't per be too surprised either. Yeah, I I would be down with that personally. I just want to see an, uh, them get aggressive with the Shadow Demon Marana. No, ma no matter what. I just feel that combo is going to be so strong with the Sun Strike. I don't really want to see them defensive trialing. Yeah, I don't know. What, I mean, why would they? Just go aggro, man. Yeah. Go ahead and, and kill stuff. It's all right. Especially, I think it's very open still. The question is if it's going to be like a mid bad rider. Better off offlane. Next, they can still pick up a mid, can still pick up another offlane if they want to. Um, currently, there's not that crazy good offlaners in the pool. The clockwork is still left there. So maybe they just want to crush the invoker mid lane. But so far, well, I would actually give the edge to Power Rangers. Excuse me. Well, it is going to be a tight hunter in that support position because we're going to see a Darkseer pick up for Power Rangers. So you mentioned, it's funny, you mentioned the universe. Uh, 
Universe, who is well known for uh, his his off lane Tidehunter, but he's even more well known for his off lane Dark Seer. And Power Rangers is going to pick up something similar. They're going to go for an off lane Dark Seer of their own. We'll see whether or not they still want to run aggressive with the Tidehunter. I think they can, but of course, it's going to depend on whether whatever carry is grabbed here from Nyx KZ because this looks to be acts in in a core position some sort of solo position because we've already had both our supports go so it can't be a pure jungler uh we have the bat rider who's traditionally an offlane or mid but axe can go in either one of those roles and do all right himself so uh i'm interested to see what next kz do here if if axe if they're trying to get really aggressive here and just like win the game by 10 minutes or something or if they're just running axe as one of those solo laners and then playing this out with some sort of uh, semi care. Okay, Shadow Fiend. That's going to be mm -hmm. good enough for a decent carry. Question is still like, do we get. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this this has to be an aggro try. Otherwise, I don't see them winning mid, lame, mid game. Uh, yeah, definitely. And X, if he farms in the aggro try lane, I think this is going to be working out very nicely. Um, the question is, however, does Power Rangers have any sort of game plan to fix this because they're sending down Scandal solo and it's a 2-2-1 right now and I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be exactly what they want. So could they actually, I think they could easily combat the tri lane coming out from next KZ but um, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see whether or not they want to rotate that or if they're just going to try and give up their safe lane in exchange for winning their others. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see but right now we've got uh, this Dueling moving out, Lucky as well as Wadafaka, uh, and Equal are going to be going in the aggressive trial lane. We got Stallcat, who's going to be our mid SF, and that leaves Reeves, who's going to be playing that safe lane Bat Rider. Meanwhile, on the Power Rangers side, we got FNG, is going to be playing the support Tidehunter. The uh, J4 is going to be on the Shadow Demon in this aggressive trial lane. We got Sheshar Cat, who is actually still going to be in that off lane position. So expect these two supports to probably just pick up the first blood and then rotate through middle and then down to the bottom lane. Uh, and then we've got Moon, who's going to be in that middle position as the Marana rather than the Invoker. Well, looking good so far. Like it. Um, question is, when are we going to be seeing rotations? Because so far, if you have Scandal not farming, he's such a huge playmaker of the whole team that I feel like if you do shut him down quite nicely, Power Rangers kind of have to adjust. What do you get from, from two other one lanes? You're going to have a Marana, who's obviously... Pretty much your one position at this point. That's great if she farms. Wonderful. And also, it's great if she gets levels. That's all nice and stuff. But there is going to be a Shadow Fiend who is obviously going to give her maybe not the hardest time, but it's going to be very annoying. And, well, uh, they're trying to get first blood. I expect a rotation right after the first blood yeah. round yeah. to the bottom lane. Same. Same, same, same. So they're going to lead with the disruption. As soon as Batrider gets a little too far forward, they'll move in. Disruption goes down. He's pretty far back, though. They can't get him. He's so far out. They're going to force out the Bat Rider. Now expect that rotation. I think they can afford to leave Darkseer versus the Bat Rider solo. And they need to be able to help out Scandal, who's now being caught out by the aggressive trialing of next KZ. Scandal will fall here. He's just going to tick out eventually. So Reverse Blood does go the way of what a fuck up. Yep, and that's a big deal. Now they're going to be rotating down um, a few more. Do you mention it? They're trying to gank mid, but... Well, Shadow Fiend is actually a good target to gank. The question is, does Shadow Fiend know? And yes, he knows. There's an aggressively forward, but there's no... There's actually disruption. Wow, that was long range. Oh, the arrow, arrow completely, completely misses. Mark. Oh, no. That was so poor. They, I mean, that wasn't even close to be able to landing. Moon just shot that one way too early. A little bit premature, you would say. So, uh, unfortunate. They, they, the rotation, not only top, but also middle, they completely fail. Again, like, you could still see the kill power, despite the fact that Tidehunter doesn't give you much. Uh, you could still see, like, the kill potential just between the Shatter Demon as well as the Marana was going to be good enough. But now they're going to be going into this bottom lane where next KZ are already beating down their tower, and they're doing that smart thing. They're going behind the Tier 1 tower and letting Axe quickly clear through the Creep Wave. They've got the Dazzle to be able to combo it up, so they kill the Creep Wave real quickly and continue to push in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're letting Power Rangers taste something of their own medicine. This is how they just completely crushed, and I think it was next KZ in JDL. Mm -hmm. They had X with an Abaddon and a Dazzle. And they just sit there, just clean up the whole ways, and they they were playing against the Lycan. Now FNG actually coming in, but he's only level 1. There's going to be a Sunstrike, but does it hit? Not too much damage flying out anyways, and Equal, can he run away? Yes, he can. And well, finally, we actually got a trial in, but this means this Invoker, who relies so much on his levels, won't find anything. 
Yeah, I mean, you saw how little that, that Sun Strike he did. He landed the Sun Strike on uh, equal. It just didn't really matter because he only did 100 damage. He didn't even really get close to dying. So uh, this is unfortunate because now the matchup between the, their middle matchup is also beginning to turn sour. <laughs> like early on, Marana's best way to be able to win this lane is get an early kill. It's the only way you beat an SF is trying to kill him before you get to like level 5. Now that Stallcat, you're level 4 right now, you're starting to hit pretty hard. You've got an extra 28 damage already from your Necromastery. You also got those high level nukes. Marana can't possibly contest with that kind of damage when it comes to CSing. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Also, um, we didn't check too much top lane because, well, there's a 1 versus 1 matchup. And so for 17 for 0 for the Darks here, again, the 16 and 1 for the, for the Batran, and that's... I feel like that's surprising. I think Batrider should win the lane very easily. And speaking of winning lane, bottom lane, FNG gets thrown up in there, lifted back, but, well, there is no follow-up at all, as long as Waterfucker is not joining them. And he also doesn't have any sort of level in the Berserker's Call, which is a bit unfortunate. Although, Battlehanger on the support is really annoying. It absolutely is. They, they just, like, because if they come too far forward to try and pick up CS, Lucky, though, they're trying to blow him up, and wow. they will get him real quickly. Tight Hunter secures the kill with a nice little anchor smash. And uh, apparently Dazzle unable to get the Shallow Grave off in time, which could have completely changed that whole entire engagement. Yeah, well, it's it's always very hard to just throw it up right there when there is like so many illusions because you can't obviously tell the difference, we can as a spectator. But if you're playing the poor Dazzle, it's it's very hard. Stalkat, woo! Barely able to dodge the arrow, but still grabs the illusion rune, so... If, if he wasn't already going to crush his lane at level 5, it gets even worse now that he's got some illusions to throw down. And you can see him, he's not only just sitting here in the middle lane, right as the rotation comes in from uh, the Shadow Demon as well as uh, FNG's Tidehunter, he goes up, he's going to farm up the jungle. He doesn't care. They see the rotation from this ward, so they... Uh, they know everything. Look at this. He's actually trying to bait out the SF illusion as much as possible, but I believe Power Rangers do know. Or maybe they don't. They're actually turning around to go back into this middle lane. Oh, now they know. Yep. Auto There's attack. There's Foppy bottom. This is just a tier 1. Five minutes in. That's not the fastest tier 1 um, I ever saw from like an aggro try, but there was someone in the lane trying to defend it. There were t I mean, there were three people from time to time, so that is completely fine. And this is just so much gold in the pocket of Next KZ. And pretty much every hero is one. So, yeah, that's pretty nice. But Stalkat has to be very careful. Yeah, we do have another rotation coming in. And I'm sure the SF, like, has been getting a lot of calls that, like, hey, bottom is still missing. You're the higher, highest priority target. Nobody is top right now. So, you know they're going to be coming for you. It's pretty obvious, but Stalkat, maybe not. Gets disrupted. Arrow, where's it going to go? Moon actually choose to leap forward and then land it. Still going to get the job done, though. And they get the kill. Meanwhile, next KZ continue their push into now a tier 2 at this bottom lane. Yeah, and this is a way better time, you know, this time around. If you just follow up, and the tower's already dropping to half HP, that's a big deal. If you just shut down the CZ lane tier 2, and oh no, there's gonna be people coming in J4. Muna Chedo's initiation is being deployed here, and this Shadow Demon can find someone, Waterfarker. Oh, he's actually going on J4. I'm not sure if you're gonna find him, though. Yep, they're trying to kill Reeves. Reeves trying to get over the cliff in time. He won't be able to. Now, what a fucker. In the middle of a bunch of heroes, but Moonlight Shadow has already gone down from the Marauder, and Next KZ have to back up. Now, I have to say, like, this whole idea by Next KZ, smart. Uh, like, the, this whole aggressive tri lane forces so much attention that the chances are SF it will do really well in the middle lane because it's almost guaranteed to be a 1v1 matchup. And if Power Rangers choose to move their supports into the middle lane to try and gank like they have, you would take quick towers. Like, that, like that's, the, that's the thing. It's like, not only... And on top of that, you should be able to have the calls. Like, you have so, so much control over this lane, you should know when the supports are missing. So it's, it's kind of like a win-win for Next KZ, no matter what. However, the fact that they brought the Batrider down here, I really don't like that. The Batrider isn't necessary for this lane. Uh, instead, like, the Darkseer is getting total free farm at the top lane when Reeves could be joining him in this top lane, maybe not contesting the Darkseer, but getting a faster Blink Dagger so he's more effective. He could have a Blink Dagger at 9 minutes in, but with the rotation he's made, it, it's not going to be that. J4, caught out, disruption defensively, but this is going to be in a bad position. Stallcat's going to blow him up. Equal gets hit by an arrow, but nothing Moon can do off of that. And next, KZ managing to move the SF now to this bottom lane, and with SF's damage, I'm okay with the SF joining this aggro try, because his physical damage will ensure they take the tier 2 that much quicker.
Yeah, this reminds me so much of Na'Vi, uh, where they just executed this court lane. Also top lane, very important kill for Reese. He just picked up the Darks, uh, Darks here. Mm -hmm. So, just a casual bit of Napalm stacking in, into a lasso, and this is all it takes, because now he's going to have a Blink deck up very soon, but there comes everyone in the book for Power Rangers. Sunstrike gonna go down. They're gonna try and blow up Waterfucker real quick. Tier 2 getting low. Stallcat focusing on trying to take that. It's low, but it's gonna get denied. Now Stallcat in some trouble. Pops is in Viz Rune and will be able to get away from some of that AoE. However, the supports won't be as lucky. FNG getting close enough once to get both kills here. He slows up Lucky. He knows Equal is already dead. With the slow on Lucky, they might be able to catch up. Lucky trying to duke his way to safety and will be able to. He's just hiding in the trees and Power Rangers have completely given up on him. So. Well played. Lucky gets away. 5-3. to three. Power Rangers right now. They're uh, a little bit behind, sitting at about a 3,500 gold lead for next KZ and uh, a 1,200 experience lead. So even experience is lead being led by next, despite the fact they're running like this sort of pseudo quad lane. Yeah, that's really surprising. Usually when you're like on the aggressive side of things and want to group up and push down towers, obviously the XP is going to just plummet into your opponent's favor. But this time around, those rotations and also the kills they found early on in the bottom lane are really crucial. And especially Badrata is just picking up so much experience. He's level 9. He's the highest level in the game. And, well, now he's got his Blink Dagger ready to boot. Now he's got his Tranquils up and running as well. So he can just go all over the map, find Picos, and as soon as his Radiant four stuff is ready to go, they can just go all out aggression and just push down, down towers, uh, I don't know, like 24-7, pretty much. That's it. Yeah, they really need their ultimates up, especially this Tidehunter ultimate. It's why mm. you pick up Tidehunter. You gotta have that Ravage, and right now, Tier 2, uh, Tier 1 is gonna fall, and FNG is gonna lose his life. The last nuke misses, but with the double damage on the SF, I can't believe Tidehunter even tried to make that work. Yeah, it's a bit optimistic, and speaking of big items flying out, there's gonna be a BKB up, uh, BKB up onto Selkat. He rushes a naked BKB, no threats, no nothing, just a, you know, a bot line, a wraith ban, and that's all there is to it, and he just wants it ASAP, and considering the lineup of Power Rangers, wonderful. He's can't, he can't just dodge the Ravage, he can't just dodge a vacuum into a wall, he can't just dodge pretty much everything in the book, and the physical DPS is just not there yet. Mirana doesn't hit for anything, especially not with a Fate Bolt on her, well, 100 damage, that's nice, but this is... This is all, and also a scandal. He's only level 7, completely uncharacteristic of his invoker. Yeah, he was just shut down so badly by that aggressive tri lane that he's going to have a hard time coming back into this because invoker, like when you go XOR and invoker, you snowball because you sit in one lane and you get golden experience by getting kills with Sunstrike. The problem is they've been trying that out a lot and Sunstrike is just not doing enough damage. So it means less kills, less experience, and less means less damage. Over and over, it's just a, a constant circle of fail. Yeah, and now there's going to be the next one. Uh, well, the next tower of the agenda of next KZ is going to be mid tier one. Smart decision, opening up all the whole vision. Reese aggressive blink forward, and now there's no five line anymore, so they can't really take it. And he had cooler on the last two. I'm not sure about this one, but I mean, Power Rangers, they're playing it smart. They're trying to defend um, as good as they can and have two people still farming. The most important farmers are right now even the Tide Hunter. And well, now he's level six, he can join the fights, and he has to. Yeah, he's going to be walking away. Uh, you can see him drawing on the map. He wants to work his way around behind next KZ, the initiation, Bat Rider. But we have a disruption trying to save Moon. Now leap away as well. We got the Ravage. It's going to be coming in, but they need all Power Rangers to be up. There it is. Five-man Ravage to turn around. Arrow lands on Stallcat. There goes the Bat Rider as well. Waterfucker is in the middle of everybody spinning, but he's just getting kited around. Fourth hero loses his life, and now equal. On the run away back to his tier one tower, Cheshire Cat was thinking about maybe trying to surge up and chase him in, but the sides against that, so <laughs> Power Rangers took a risk, man, but it was well worth it. That was a great team fight for them, even despite the fact they lost their tier one tower. Yep, exactly. And I mean, if you lose a few towers here and there, it's completely okay as long as you actually just crush them right after in the team fights, because eventually you're going to take those objectives. You're going to take down those tier 1s, those tier 2s, and then you're going to just swim in gold. Uh, speaking of swimming in gold, there's going to be a blink dagger up there, and I um, have to say, on the X, by the way, um, not finishing my sentences, but it's all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you see it on the right-hand side of the screen. Anyways, it's all right. Um, and also, this decision-making from Power Rangers was spot on. FNG, he was staying in the top lane just to get the experience from a safe, completely pushed in lane, so there's nothing which could have stopped his level 6, and boy did he make his level 6 work. 
Yeah, that was a pretty ballsy play, but honestly, next KZ really played into his hand. Uh, they could have just taken that tier one tower and backed away, and Tidehunter wouldn't have been there in time. But thankfully, they pushed forward, and that allowed Tidehunter to uh, just walk right in, hit a good five man ravage, and after that, next KZ were pretty much done for. So. Uh, next KZ still very, very far ahead. Like the Blink Dagger's up on the Axe with the Vanguard. SF has a BKB and now building into some basic stat items that he hasn't had before. So uh, they, they've got a huge advantage. It's going to need Power Rangers. They need a couple more team fights like that where they get some sort of surprise with the Moonlight Shadow. But uh, something tells me next KZ, they won't let that happen twice. Well... It's not about something, it's pretty much about the items, and we see it, like, Eco just pick up a few sentries here and there, and then they're gonna be content with just pushing down the ways, and also, this BKB up on the Shadow Fiend, I think it just wasn't up in the last side, yeah, indeed, it wasn't, and now it's finished, he just needs his level 11 right now for level 2 in the Rakim of Souls, and then you can just go ham, completely destroying all those team fights. because, well, we talked about it earlier, there's nothing which can actually stop him, so, he's just gonna wreck face. You know what they're gonna have to do? as their mm -hmm. form of initiation, because they can no longer rely on Moonlight Shadow, which is doubtful you'll get another great initiation like that. Blink Dagger is going to be too slow for Tidehunter. There's going <laughs> to be a team fight before he can farm up another uh, 1,100 gold. So what they're, what they're going to have to do here, I think, is rely on Scandal, who does have a Force Staff, and he's just going to have to Force Staff the Tidehunter in. That's going to okay. be your best hope at initiation. Well, that's a risky one. But yep. yeah, I, I mean, you're right, actually. Yeah, Why not? Might as well go for it. It's um, the best and this play they have in their book right now, considering how under farm they are. Or maybe just like wait for for a bit and then just have the Ravage to counter initiate. Mm. Just this other yeah. counter initiation against a 10 second BKB. Oh, I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> yeah, SF's going to kill, just slaughter everybody, and then Tidehunter's going to be the only one left. Uh, you, you've got just so many squishy heroes uh, when the SF starts beating on him, cause, just because like, he's hitting for 170 damage right now. Mm, exactly, and the minus armor as well from yeah. the from the weave and from his aura. Weave isn't even picked up yet, but this is going to be online very soon because, well, time and time again, supports getting fed some experience, and that's a big deal. Question is, can hmm, can Lucky actually survive this? There is people waiting for him, but you know what? He can. You mentioned it. There is no blink tag up at for like anyone. Yeah, unless they manage to surprise, surprise the dazzle with an arrow. That's their only form of like long range initiation right now. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Dazzle is just going to go pick up his level 6, scoots back to the base, and it's going to be completely and utterly fine. Yeah. Yep, so uh, pause coming up. 14 minutes in, we got a 5,000 gold lead for next KZ. However, we do have a 2,300 experience lead for Power Rangers. So it goes back and forth. Levels are uh, obviously very, very important right now, but it's a huge gold lead that next KZ hold. And uh, on top of that, they've got this nice SF. Like, SF is just such a good hero. If you're able to make it through the laning phase, fine. You really just start exploding and farm. So unless Power Rangers make a really concerted effort to shut him down, he's going to get very, very big in the next few minutes. Yeah, exactly. And going for the treads right after the BKB, wonderful decision here. It's exactly what you need. And now, well, there's going to be... No weave up, level 6, and Lucky actually skilled two levels up in the Shadow Wave. That's interesting. Maybe they just don't want to fight yet. They just maybe want to wait for something. But speaking of fighting, well, Soul Catcher Arrow this time around will nails him down. And, well, it's an easy kill. Yeah, but that was three heroes sitting there for a very, very long time. And what are they really farming up on? Like, Darkseer, uh, you know, I love Darkseer. And oh, he's great and everything. Great. But the farm on Darkseer, not that amazing. Whoa, that was interesting. He had an invis rune ready to go, and there was a counter ward being deployed right there. Now, speaking oh. of being deployed, what if I actually just jumps in? Disruption onto Moon, defensive one, and now here comes a nice Ravage hitting onto two. Reese, he's got a lasso, but he can't really just push him out because, well, this Ravage is just too disruptive, and now even the ultimate being used. And who's gonna get away? Everyone on the side of Power Rangers. Wow, even the Shadow Demon surviving on like 30 HP. And they lose their counter ward instantly, too, just as like the extra insult added to the injury. So another great team fight for Power Rangers, man. They are really clawing their way back into this game after Next KZ just took such an early advantage. And this is unfortunate because while SF is, is going to be great, he's going to explode and farm and everything, uh, the problem I've seen with Axe time and time again is that like you, you could absolutely dominate games for the first 20 minutes, 
but you can really fall off after that, even if you did get just a ton of gold. The equal snags the haste rune right under Marana's nose, able to, to uh, snag it just before the arrow lands. <laughs> Speaking of equal, he needs a bit more, and then he's going to have a shiny new bling dagger being picked up. And, well, he really needs something like this, in my opinion, at least. Cause to steal you Ravage? It. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe force of as well. Pull up a dandy. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think you need to rely on your playmaking heroes, which are not eggs very, very soon, because you mentioned it. <sighs> I don't know. It's very hard to make an egg work when he doesn't have like the, this insane start you usually want him to have. Yeah, for me, it's it's just like Blink Tiger makes stealing um, Ravage so much easier. Mm -hmm. So, so much easier. Jump in, Wadafaka. Wanted to see if they could pick off Scandal, but uh, it's actually going to be Scandal trying to turn this around as he does have teleports in. Arrow. Oh, it hit the creep. Value being created. Got the gold. He's going to be good. <laughs> um, no, well... Also, Moon, he picks up a Blade of Alacrity. Do you reckon it's going to be a Diffusal Blade? Do you want to see a Yasha? Oh, speaking of... No, wait a Stand second. Scandal in some in. trouble. Drag back in. Axe and Stalkat. Both blowing him up. And now they can push into the Tier 2 if they want to. And I think with taking down that Invoker, that's like the scariest hero you could deal with right now. So pushing into a Tier 2 is... is uh, I think they've got such a big advantage right now. They can absolutely take it and just back out real quickly. But they seem kind of hesitant. Wadafaka, now he starts tanking about SF, will start beating on the tower. We have an arrow come in, Wadafaka does land on him, but he's the tankier of the heroes. Now going to be slowed up by the Purge as well, trying to keep him in range of this tier 2 as long as possible. Now, four staff back, the SF though, held in place. Oh no, he had that small body block, he can't go back. He's just going to activate his ultimate and then teleport away. Made all of Power Rangers back up out of fear and then teleports while they try and surge back in. Very, very smart play, though. What a fuck. Oh, the Sunstrike couldn't quite get him FNG. Oh, he could have blown the Ravage there for the solo kill on Axe, but he knows he's going to need it for that next team fight. Yeah, it's a very smart decision to not blow it there because he's sitting on 2k gold, so he's going to have a Blink Dagger very soon. And if you have a Blink Dagger and he's got a smoke in his inventory, this is just like the Batrider likes to play the Blink Dagger pickup. Smoke up and go kill someone, like, right away. And if you have a Ravage, as opposed to a Lasso, you can just go for, like, three to five people to kill. So, Dyer's smart play here, and there it is. It's going to be a Blink up on the Rubik. Wonderful. Yep, just in time with the Tidehunter. So if he plays it passively enough, he can Blink in, steal the Ravage, and turn it around back on to Power Rangers. And that just completely negates the whole entire uh, idea of picking Tidehunter. Yep. I mean, <laughs> stealing Ravage is still very hard. Um, yep, yeah, this oh. is going to be an easier one. He doesn't use the Anchor Smash. Now he does. It's going to be an arrow landing onto Stalkat. Wonderful initiation. FNG gets blown up. But they take down two. It's a good exchange. Oh, the dunk is missed. Oh, no. J4 disrupts himself. He's still going to fall, though. He's surrounded by fire and a spinning axe. He's going to have to get out. So a two for two exchange. But that was two supports on the side of Power Rangers in exchange for one support but also that SF, which was a really key kill for them. Yeah, and if you lose the Tide Hunter after he blows his Ravage, that's completely fine. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I mean, he's pretty much there for the Ravage and Anchor Smash right after that he doesn't give the Ravage away. But this is really all there is to it. And, well, afterwards you can just go and uh, it's alright if you just go to the seas. And I have to say, I'm, I'm still impressed. If Waterfucker would have nailed down his chop there and actually killed someone with a, with a dunk, they could have still turned more because they kind of need that movement speed in, in the whole fight. It's so nice to actually chase. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate that he didn't get it. When it's a level 1 chop, now it's level 2. It's, uh, it's a bit better now. Regen picked up. Scandal, what items does he got? He's got that Blink Dagger 4 staff that he uh, ran the last couple of games. Blink Dagger just on the Tide Hunter. J4, he's not going to have much, but Moon, how's his damage going? He's got drums as well as Yasha, Ring of Aquila, and Phase Boots. So he's got all those kind of like really, really early stat items uh, that kind of fill up your inventory. It helps out in damage a lot, but we're nowhere near one big item just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also personally not a fan of Yash um, Yasha into Manta first. Because I feel like it's such a cookie cutter build. It's nice for the movement speed. Yeah, I get that. And it's nice to dispel some stuff. And I mean, against this lineup of next Kazi, you can actually argue that Manta is going to be a good pickup. But all in all, it doesn't give you too much damage and not too much survivability anyways. Because there's going to be raises. There's going to be Firefly. And uh, speaking of raises, they're just going to be... Oh, man, Stalkat pops his PKB, unwinds the Requiem, wants to find a kill. But this PKB, very smartly just seeping out. And 
time and time again, Stelka goes for the big plays, or like goes super aggro and then just TPs out with the BKB. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't get killed once. <laughs> oh, man. It's working out well, man. He's, I mean, he's chopping down his BKB charges, and that sucks, but he's still, uh, he hasn't been dying much. He's got almost 3k gold in the bank right now, so he can buy something big real quickly. Uh, Batrider is going to have a BKB soon. What a fucka. He just finished up his blade mail, and uh, looks like, hmm, what do you think this ogre club is going into? Dare we say uh, ags? I want to say ags. I think it's pretty damn cool. Especially because you can just like blink onto a courier and just chop him down. Pretty neat. <laughs> That's the worst yeah. shit ever. <laughs> That's <so> ridiculous. <laughs> that is the worst thing ever. No, Pimp Muckle, no. Okay. Just I'm, for, I'm out just here. for mentioning it, you're banned. Okay. So. I right, listen, I've just I just have like too many bad memories of About just watching chopped. watching Axe chop down my precious chesty the chest courier. And uh, uh You're one of those guys, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What, I have the special career? No, no, it's alright. It's... The viewers will know. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I would've loved to see Twitch chat here in this one, but well, we're on DM. So there's no Twitch chat, but it's a daily motion chat, and everyone is anonymous. Hmm. Yay! 13 to 7, 22 and a half minutes in! Uh, gold lead has remained roughly the same. Experience has dipped down a little bit in the favor of next KZ, and it seems like they're just farming more efficiently right now. And uh, really, okay, this is what I want to talk about earlier. What, hold on, middle, what a fucka, hold up. Purged, held in place, he does have that blade mail though. So he does not really care, and Power Rangers are too squishy to try and focus that damage. Top Meanwhile, top, Stalkat activates that ultimate. He's trying to fight up against Scandal, but there's too much minus armor. He will fall a second time, but he gets the counter kill on the Invoker, thanks to his death animation blowing up and adding in that extra bit of damage, so not a bad trade for the SF. Yeah, it's not a bad trade for the SF, but at the same time, if your invoker solos up a Shadow Fiend, who is pretty much one of the best one versus one heroes in the game, because uh, he's got like everything he needs for it, like good nukes, he's got his BKB ready to go, and I mean, Shadow Fiend got the experience, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, no, actually, no, Scandal died first, no, Scandal died second, okay, equal, by the way, gets blown up, just uh, nothing to see here. <laughs> And I still feel like it's a good trade for Power Rangers. Because, well, it was a BKB touchdown as well. Yeah, 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 I, I, I agree, I agree. It just could have been much worse yeah, for, yeah, uh, for next KC. Stacking up, uh, we're going to have a nice little recovery here. So I'm going to interest to see who gets to farm that. Whether that's actually going to be the SF, who appears to be going for a early butterfly. Not a big surprise there. Pretty standard item after the uh, BKB for many SFs. What a fucker, though. What is he going to go? He picks up an Invis rune. See if maybe he can defend this middle tower. Once again, next KZ, uh, they've done a really good job holding on to their towers. Like, I, I think you can criticize them for a lot. I think they've got a lot of things to work on. Hold on, what a fucker. Ooh, jumping in, but arrow? No. I think there's a lot you can criticize next KZ for, but one thing is they do hold on to their map control uh, very well. Yeah, that's actually a really big deal, and... It looks like it's a BKB for Waterfucker. How unfortunate. But, well, the item is just insanely good here. And also, I'm actually surprised to see Stellcat not going for any sort of lifesteal. I think a casual Morbid Mask would have been working wonders in this game. Well, if you have Waterfucker tanking the Ancient stack for you, it's alright. Yep, so Waterfucker is going to pull a little bit out of that stack. Uh, Stellcat gets most of it. It's working its way towards the butterfly. So we got a lot of items coming up. Moonlight Shadow is going to be activated, though, by Power Rangers, who... Uh, also smoke up at the same time. Not going to find anything, and they didn't really want to go into the Ancient area, mainly because there's still all these Tier 1 towers up. It's so hard to make the Moonlight Shadow uh, worth something when you try and go for those pickoffs when you're just Tier 1 towers are up everywhere. Even yeah, if you do is... find someone, there's going to be teleports. Right, and also they got spotted out. There is a decanter ward here in the bottom river, so that's a big deal. But they're not done yet. They want to find someone, and they want to fight bad. Although, I might as well wait for the Ravage level 2, because it's coming very, very soon. Tier 1 going down. Power Rangers continue the assault. As they start pushing into Tier 2, we have Mech up for the Dazzle. Equal has that Blink Dagger that we talked about a long time ago. And uh, all in all, next KZ, they seem pretty content just to sit back and continue to farm up. Mm -hmm. Well, they might just wait for the BKB on the X, and maybe the Butterfly on the SF, and then just go. Um, although... Hmm. Who would you give the upper hand in the late game? 
you know, I was trying to think about that, but honestly, I'm not too sure one way or the other. Dark Seer is pretty powerful going into late game. Tidehunter gets a little bit better with uh, BKB charges going down. You can actually sit there pretty patiently uh, and just wait for the BKBs to run out. Most of your heroes are still going to be alive because most of them have a lot of good survivability going into late game. So it's not like Power Rangers have bad. It's just the problem is they don't have a really good late game carry. Moon's going to get caught up. What a fucker. Trying to burst him down real quickly. Sheshar Cat. There goes the Ravage Vacuum and the Boom. Take it down. Two heroes equal. Also getting low. He's going to go down. What a fucker though. BK beat up with his friend the Bat Rider. They managed to kill Moon's Marana, but can they get more here? Scandal getting low. What a fucker wants to provide the chop, but he can't get any one low enough he's just getting kited around now turning on fng can't chop him in time bounce back though reeves will get the kill but now he has to force staff over the cliff disrupted maybe if they get a vacuum can they vacuum him back in no he didn't force staff over the cliff now he's gonna fall because of that unfortunate bit of timing there on that force staff push that was really unfortunate um still though that was a it was an interesting fight because x actually initiated and as I don't know. Seriously, there was a bit of an error here. So, Bat Rider didn't go for a Firefly, neither in this position nor like in, in this sort of the area. Mm -hmm. And in the end, he, FNG was like sitting right here and he could just blink in and completely destroy any sort of follow-up initiation. And then there was an X who just had a BKB activate and then did nothing. And that's really unfortunate because you could have just followed up and destroyed everyone with a nice Requiem. But well, that's the freaking Shadow Fiend we're talking about. He's got 355 movement speed. There is nothing he can do if there's a freaking Ravage just in his face because he has to actually just do something about this uh, Titan right in front of his. So, well played from Power Rangers, especially from FNG finding the opening. At the same time, it's a bit unfortunate that uh, Betrider didn't scout anything and, well, these are the fight Power Rangers really needs because they're going to get like a head in gold and, of course, not only too much on the objectives because they didn't take the tier 2 bottom but still, like, these are good fights to take and if they just find the levels, they're going to be completely fine, if, I, I think at least. Yeah, right now this uh, yeah that was just a really bad bad team fight execution wise by them. It could have gone so much better. Power Rangers they do take the top net worth of the board. SF and Axe are still uh pretty close, but Cheshire Cat, man, he has just been farming up a storm all game long. And I was going to say like that's the big difference. Like SF is going to do, do so much more with that uh, gold that you have, but Cheshire Cat has now picked up Blink Dagger as well to Scythe the Vice. That's going to be a huge counter to this SF. Mm -hmm. He can Blink yep. in, he can, he can just go ahead and real quickly Scythe the Vice, vacuum anybody close as well, and then throw down the wall, throw a Ravage. Like, you have that element of initiation now, that sort of instant disable before the BKB can be activated. Yeah, also there's so many items now coming out for Power Rangers as well. I'm not sure how, how much... Um any one of us mentioned, but there's like triple blink deck, a double four stuff up. This is so much mobility and the only one having no item at all, like neither four stuff nor blink deck, is gonna be Moon on his Mirana who's got a freaking leap. That's just pretty heads up play from Power Rangers, I like it. Cheshire Cat, looks like he's also going for an Aghanims as well as he has picked up a point booster and that's not a bad idea. Like if you go into late game, SF is the better carry than anybody from Power Rangers. However, Invoker and Marana are not terrible in their own rights. They're pretty decent soft carries, right? Uh, SF is just going to do more than you, but that's going to get turned around on by the fact that if you get an Aghanims on this Darkseer, uh, you get an, a version of the SF your own that's even more powerful. What a fucker though, catches the arrow and now he's going to fall. Shalgrave, Gonna be able to buy him some time. Now the vacuum in. Can they stop his teleport? They will, in fact, with the invoker coming in. Blowing up the two supports in the back as well. And Power Rangers crush three heroes real quickly and take a tier two off of it. Power Rangers, man, they've just been, despite the fact that it seemed like both games, next KZ, had a very, very early lead, Power Rangers just seem to always execute so much better going into the mid game. Yeah, they have to be very fast though because they do have a glyph and they're using it right now. But can Power Rangers actually take down the melee Rex before there is a tier three falling on the side uh, of their own base actually? And it looks like they're not rotating back just yet. They really want those melee Rex and, okay, so there's double rotations coming back and, oh, they're gonna go in and now there is everything. Look at this, this is just disgusting damage, that's it. 
Yeah, they're willing to throw the Ravage just to make sure they killed the SF during that Scythe of Ice time. Tidehunter will give up his life in the process, but Batrider, he made it kill things, but we knew that Rax was going to fall at the bottom lane. So 24 to 11, Power Rangers get themselves a big lead. Now Reeves make it caught out on the way out. Tries to teleport away, Sunstrike. Oh, it finishes him off. Scandal able to do that extra bit of burst damage to ensure the kill. Additional style points if you actually sunstrike in the base and then get the kills. But this time around, well, it's alright as well. Especially since just cleaning up so many kills. And it was like, they just got so many kills from all of this. They just lost the Tide Hunter and... I mean, it's the Tide Hunter who already got a dagger and the recipe of the Refresher Orb and a freaking Oblivion Staff. This guy is stacked for a support. And we're 31 minutes in, it's not like he's poor by any means and he's still spotting a level 13 so yeah it's completely fine to lose him there he's still gonna get a refresher someday in the future yeah he's he's definitely made a uh, big recovery from where he once was which was like sitting level five at like i don't know seven eight minutes in struggling to find any sort of farm because all their early rotations just went tits up oh, lucky. lucky gonna take a sun strike to the face but Going to be fine because of that. Aghanims is now up for the Darkseer, so excellent. We're going to see that uh, extra, what, 140% illusion uh, from the SF. That's going to be his main target when it comes to the Wall of Replica. So that's going to be, uh, oh, man, I actually think Power Rangers have the much better late game here. With the, with the Darkseer, going for that Aghanims, it's just so good versus SF. Like there are a lot of there are a lot of carry heroes. It's not strong against uh, examples being like heroes like uh, Lone Druid uh, is a really big hero. Like because his actual hero doesn't do much most of the time. All the items are on the bear. Um, there are a lot of carries like that where the Dark Seer is not all that effective. Gyrocopter is another one mainly because you rely on flat cannon. Uh, but the SF man, you get the full single target damage of the SF. It's everything you want. Yeah, especially you're gonna get the aura as well, and that's like the biggest deal here. So having a minus armor as well, like what is it, minus six or something? It's ridiculously high. Yeah, it's it's pretty good, I have to say. And now very smart play from Power Rangers. They're waiting just a bit until the Ravage up. It's going to be up in like five seconds, and then they can actually pick the fights if they want to. And so far, well, next they're doing the smart play. They're just falling back a bit and waiting until they've got everyone ready to go. And well, this time around they're not getting caught out here. Batrider is doing the smart thing, actually scouting people out. Jump in, pull back, right into the ultimate of the SF, but the disruption lasts too long. Now Moon pops his BKB and simply jumps away. Stallcat, there goes that wall of replica, and boom! The scandal unloads on the SF. Now Lucky trying to get away. Good vacuum into a nice little pop by the Batrider, but there goes that Ravage. Stunning him up, will be able to clear that out of his inventory to make sure Equal cannot steal it. FNG trying to pop Equal, it's going to be the Marana coming in. What a fuck up. Now he's going to be able to hold FNG, should be able to get this kill with the simple chop actually arrow goes down fng still falls but what a fucka unable to get that extra movement speed which they need right now for j4 chasing him down batrider gets the kill mask of madness man the auto attacking batrider you never thought you would see the day when that gets you a triple kill but sure enough reeves walks away the victor for that team fight for next kz yeah, that was ridiculously good play. Oh, he's um, gonna go for more moon. What are you doing? Get out of there, buddy The flame break oh. almost managed to kill moon one more auto attack. He's got a blink. He's got something. He's got everything oh, no. he needs Yep, complete complete wipe Batrider picks up four out of the five heroes that died on the Power Rangers side <laughs> That was really clowny. That was really clowny. I mean the turn went slow on the nap was just so insane and this guy going for the Bone 7 build, this is just so good when you are actually chasing and winning team fights. I'm really surprised they won this because the Shadow Fiend ultimate was on top of a disruptor target and they could have blown up anyone right there, but still, I mean, they get the big kills and especially especially the Morana dying at the end, it's just pretty crucial because she was looking at a very healthy bank account and now there's no BKB coming out, there's no Monkey Kimba coming out, um, BKB, I'm sorry, Monkey Kimba coming out. And she still needs to find a bit more until there's something in her inventory actually dealing damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, I almost feel like maybe it wasn't necessary for you to go MKB because that SF, man, he just disappeared. Every single time Darkseer is focusing on Scythe of Ice, throw down the wall to get the illusion. He starts beating on the illusion and then always, 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 Scandal blinks in and throws down his full wombo combo while the, you're still Scythe of Ice up. So, the SF cannot really live through that any time. As long as they always have the initiation, it's not really necessary for Murana to try and counteract that butterfly. So maybe a bit more stats-oriented item would help him out. I'm not really sure. 
Yeah, it's always a bit iffy. Um, in the end, though, actually, uh, Stalker picks up Helm of the Dominator. Love this pickup. So much sustain for a Shadow Fiend who's hitting like a truck. And, well, now he's got a DD. Now he's hitting for like 400 damage. But usually he's still got a very healthy amount of damage. Well above 270 damage. So, pretty good. Although, um, and, okay, I, I sound like a broken record. But 650 maximum mana on FNG is like ridiculously low. He doesn't even have mana boots. He won't have the combination mana at all. This is... I don't know. Even once he gets, if he gets mana boots in time, what he he should not be uh, leveling Ravage at level three, because then then that that crushes you. It's an extra one hundred mana at level three. So if you actually want to be able to get like the best combo here, you pick up Arcanes, you leave it at level two until you have enough mana to to actually get the level three combo. Because leveling it up once means an extra two hundred mana. Yeah, I mean, you can use mana boots twice, but it doesn't give you so much. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's more of a safety mechan uh, mechanism. If you leave it at level 2, you can always anchor smash right after. And yeah. if you don't, you're going to have a big problem, because there's going to be a Rubik steering that shit. And that that's where fights really go south. If you give the Rubik, who's going to spoil... Uh, yeah, he's going to have a 4-stuff real, really, really soon, so... They are still not winning the game, like, at all. They still have to be very careful about the initiation. They do have a nice lead, I feel like. And gold is actually kind of even-ish. Experience is looking way better. But still, like, they can always just lose. And they have to be really careful about this sort of stuff. And FNG, I'm not sure about this one, buddy. What a fucker right now. He's seeing if maybe he could loop around. Weave is going to go down. Five heroes getting that extra armor, man, so they could just tank up. We're pushing this tier two. We do have the Bat Rider searching around. Mask of Madness looking in, trying to grab Scandal. Another good disruption. But he's going to be in a bad position when he comes out. Invoker in some trouble. Does able to get that Moonlight Shadow. Chop goes down. Not enough, but he still falls as he was in just such a bad position. That's the problem with Shadow Demon. As a counter to the Bat Rider, at this point in time, you need to be disrupting the Bat Rider. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter if you save the hero. That, that burn damage while he's being dragged back. It's still the fact he's being dragged back. Oh, they do, actually, they get the double ravage. Wow. FNG pulls it out. Three heroes will fall. And now the SF equal manages to sa save that second ravage. Steal it, throw it back in, but it doesn't matter. He's going to fall. Stallcat will go down as well. And everybody following Batrider last hero to try and get out. And will be looping around on the side, but... All of his allies went down due to that uh, expert initiation there. FNG, he took a risk, but it paid off. He blinked in and popped the Ravage and was just hoping that the BKB would not go down in time by the SF. Now pulling Just back four. J4. Yep. And Mask of Madness. Oh, man. I mean, I, that was just silly. I think he's just trying to draw attention away from this Tier 2, away from the push that's coming in by Power Rangers. He has to be really freaking careful, though, because Cheshire Cat, uh, no, he's just... Doing the smart way. He was just buying items, not going to be cutting up uh, any sort of bad rider there. And, well, what a beautiful initiation. I have to say, like, this blink dagger up on Cheshire Cat just paying off big time. And we saw the double ravage, and it was exactly what I mentioned early on. It actually got stolen, but it just didn't matter. Because they won the team fight so hard anyways. Um, bad rider, I'm not... Well... Well... Uh, okay, never mind. Obviously, he's a bad try. He's got Firefly ready to boot. You can just always get the hell out of there. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. In this rune up onto FNG. What is he going to be making with this one? Also, point booster. What is... Oh. Serious? He's going to pick up J4 now. Dragging it back. Moonlight Shadow, though. J4 should be able to live with this, especially since Firefly is down. Now Reeves. Oh, he has to pop the BKB just to dodge a lot of this magic damage. He would have got crushed. Now trying to walk away, just get some distance, popping the Mask of Madness. He just needs his Blink to be off cooldown, but he's taking so much extra damage, he's not going to get that Blink in time. Mega kill streak denied by Moon. He picks up a Mega kill streak by ending Batrider's Mega kill streak. What a class of uh, just oh, switch rules. Killing. So now uh, uh -huh. Crystal's being picked up. Top lane, yep, SF going to fall. Wow, Scandal picks up that one. <laughs> And, uh, sorry about that earlier. The reason I wasn't talking, my mic back died. Oh. I was like, huh. Kept, Always kept an so issue. Dead. Dead game I was com. in such a good mood today. I thought casts were going great. And then we got Daily Motion stream went down. Okay. And just like... I mean, ESL casts were really freaking good today. Yeah. It was, uh, we had some damn fine games today. That was okay. fine. Now, uh, Power Rangers taking some good control, pushing into Tier 3 right now. And all of a sudden, like, man, 
Alacrity going down to the Mirana, just beating into this tier three. It will fall here. Next KZ, they still need another 30 seconds for the rest of three heroes. Power Rangers, they can fully commit to taking a set of racks, but they are yeah, being split pushed. Yeah, but th this is an ex. Like, yeah, he's the slowest split pusher ever. It's it's nice. He's trying. It's a good idea. But in the end, like, what can you really do? And there goes your melee racks. Bye bye. It's. Yeah, I don't know. Good play from PR. Very smart, just to get the objectives. Rax is down, what a fucker, still slowly chopping at that tower, man. He's like a goddamn lumberjack. Eventually, he will take that down that tree, but it's gonna be a long time coming. And meanwhile, Power Rangers, they're expertly moving into the second tier three. Now, we do have the SF as well as the Batrider. Now, the initiation, BKB pulling back J4, but the initiation, the stack, Soulcat once again. We get another Ravage going down, counter Ravage. FNG, he's got the second Ravage up. He pops it now, grouped up inside of the wall as well. Next KZ, they're falling apart. Inside of that, Batrider goes down as well. Instant buyback from Stallcat, but he's left alone. No Axe is gonna buy back as well. Can they get some sort of kill here. Maybe if they get something, Scandal is actually in trouble. He tried to go too far in. I'm not sure if that was some sort of miss micro, but he may tick out just from Battle Hunger. FNG, he's gonna go down here. Wadafaka gets the call, and it looks like Invoker will live, thankfully, because he's just gonna have to just pop Quas. <laughs> gets in that extra bit of regen. Now pops Ghostwalk. Wadafaka, can you guess it, buddy? Blink call? No. Those he's things, not gonna man. get it. FNG would. Like, he had a TP? Uh, seriously? What? Okay, never mind. He's really toying with him. Um, oh, and so region. FNG, he was like, TPing out, and then he saw Scandal going full YOLO, and he actually cancelled his TP, and, and he was like this big, uh, this big donkey playing, uh, playing, hey guys, of next, Please, please follow me here. It's uh, it's this way around, and he actually got them to kill. Oh him. my and God! That ice scandal. wall was beautifully sent. Now what a fuck has to pop his BKB, scandal man, making the most out of his regen rune that he grabbed earlier. Now keeps on going. Oh, this is risky. Though Sunstrike actually hits equal of all heroes. He gets a Sunstrike of his own. Scandal now ghost walking and just walking away because there's no counter vision. Nope. Oh, there goes the counter ward. Now they catch out scandal. Counter Sunstrike. Taste it. What? Tasted scandal. Get some of that own medicine of yours. What the fuck? I'm not. What? What, <laughs> what is Cheshire Cat doing? He was. He's going full scandal right now. I don't know, man. He was trying to help out his buddy, I guess. But now he's in some trouble, being chased down by the battle hunger, and does uh, not going to be able to it's use that blink dagger anytime soon. But here comes J4, saving his ally. Lucky, trying to keep that uh, axe alive. Cheshire Cat, though, he is not to be trifled with, man. He's got a ton of farm now. FNG coming in, trying to do that bit of damage reduction, gets away. Now the leap in by Moon with the BKB activated. He's just focusing on Stallcat. He's got that MKB. He's got that bit of Kryptonite, and Equal's gonna fall as well. He gets disrupted and GG is called. They know it's gonna be too long for their death timers. They had already blown a couple of buybacks earlier. So Power Rangers, they were easily gonna go into the base and end it all. So they go ahead and call it, and Power Rangers go undefeated today against Next KZ, taking it four to zero. Two games in ESL and two games in the D2CL. Sweet play from them. I was questioning Scandal. But this was a mistake. You never question the scandal. Also, fun fact, four blink daggers up on the side of PR. Well, that's just how it is. All the mobility, all the initiation, man. If uh, if Stallcat was ever able to pop his BKB before the Ravage initiation, so many of the team fights potentially could have been better. For yep. Them. But uh, he just was never able to get it. Always surprised by uh, FNG's initiation and... Then once you get stunned once, man, it's all over from there because then you get Vacuum, Scythe of Vice, another Ravage comes in, then you get Deafening Blast and Meteor. SF just had such a hard time. Uh, it just gets blown up every single time. So Pimp Muckle Man, it has been a long day. Been in this call for 6 hours and 15 minutes. Thank you so much for joining me <laughs> and uh, keeping, helping me keep my sanity through all of the, uh, the nonsense that we had going on the last two games. Well, I'm pretty dead. Sure <laughs> Me you. too, man. Me too. I am uh, down uh, to just go get some food, uh, go home, and maybe even play some Dota. Maybe. What? I don't. I don't know, man. Anarchy. It's, Report. It's, I haven't actually played all that much Dota. It's it's kind of rough, like coming in, casting all day, and then going home. And you're like, oh, I don't want to look at this game anymore. You know, it's it's Good. it takes a lot of passion to keep it going uh, for this long, but. 
I, I probably still will do it. I probably will go home and play some Dota. <laughs> so, hey, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We appreciate it. We apologize again. Uh, game one was not streamed. So we apologize for those of you uh, who are tuning in. But we did record it. Um, we had some daily motion issues, but we did do a local recording. So it is going to be up on daily motion, and uh, it will be up on YouTube 48 hours after that. So, um, yeah, just uh, check it out. Cast were a little rough due to technical issues, but thank you so much for bearing with us. And uh, I'm Capitalist. You can follow me at Dota Capitalist. My co-caster was Pip Muckle. You can follow him at Pip Muckle. And we are out. We'll see you guys next time in live stream, which will be tomorrow. We've got D2CL returning, and uh, we may have some ESL tiebreaker matches, though now that I think about it, I don't think we have any ties. So we're good. It's just going to be D2CL tomorrow. So be sure to check that out. We've got Rock's Kiss versus Relax is going to be the match. That is sure to be a very, very fun, fun affair. So be sure to tune in tomorrow. We'll see you guys next time on the live stream.